Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, August 12th, and here in the Atlantic we're watching a tropical wave that's now moving south of Hispaniola westward through the Caribbean. And uh, this is the wave we were watching uh, back on August 4th when it was in the eastern Atlantic, and over the last week it's journeyed across, and uh, now it's south of Hispaniola, and uh, during this last week we've been discussing the potential for this to be a development threat in the northwestern Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico when it gets into a favorable environment in here. And this is still something that I think has a decent shot at trying to develop into a tropical storm in this region. And the reason why is you can see a lot of convection going off in the Caribbean right now. We have a very favorable area of upward motion in this area of the world. And as this wave axis here moves towards the west, it's going to act as a break on the trade wind flow coming in from its east once it gets west of Jamaica and force these uh, trade winds to pile up and when that air piles up it has nowhere to go but upward and that rising air will generate even more thunderstorms and help form an area of low pressure somewhere east of the Yucatan here likely by Thursday and when that happens uh, it's going to be in a more favorable environment because right now there's a big upper trough north of the Caribbean which is causing a shearing flow aloft out of the west and this is not a favorable environment but by the time this wave axis gets over here we have a lot of heat building with these thunderstorms and so by the time the wave axis gets towards the Yucatan we're probably going to see a bubble of high pressure develop over the northwestern Caribbean as these thunderstorms release heat into the upper atmosphere and as it does so it's going to help split this trough in two and bring a piece over here in a piece to the east and we have a bubbling ridge ballooning northward um, in between and with our wave axis underneath uh, this is something that will be favorable uh, for potential development. This is the GFS out to day three showing this with the wave axis uh, coming towards Cancun here and then you can see the upper level winds at 200 millibars a clockwise flow aloft. This is favorable for low wind shear and for spreading air out at the top of the system and this is a favorable environment for potential development. And this is why we've been watching this system and why some of the models are now starting to pick up on development uh, with the GFS ultimately bringing this northward towards the Gulf Coast as a tropical storm. Uh, the Canadian bringing this into the Gulf Coast as a near hurricane, though keep in mind the Canadian is usually overdone on intensity. And the FIM, which is a new model uh, but has done well over the last couple of years bringing a tropical storm into the Mississippi Delta in five days. So we have a lot of models starting to come on board now and have done so over the last uh, couple of days really starting to hone in on at least some development of this disturbance as it comes uh, through the Yucatan Peninsula region and into the Gulf. So this is something we will have to watch. And uh, right now the main concern with the system is it's such a broad wave that as it comes west development is not going to be explosive. It's going to be a very gradual slow process in the western Caribbean here and uh, we're not likely to see anything particularly strong unless something unexpected happens in the western Caribbean here. But very heavy rainfall is going to spread from Jamaica westward over the Central America, uh, Yucatan Peninsula and perhaps Cuba as this wave continues to generate lots of thunderstorms as you can see it already is probably even more thunderstorms than it currently is generating uh, will be over this area bringing torrential rains and flooding will be a large concern for this area and probably the main concern uh, this is unlikely to develop into anything strong that would bring wind damage to the area uh, but heavy rainfall and flooding damage is certainly a problem uh, with this system for the Caribbean but as it uh, moves onward after that you can see most of these models here bringing it north uh, that are developing the storm and so this is going to obviously be a potential concern for the United States and the rest of the Gulf Coast to see where this storm might go and who it might impact after the Yucatan and the Western Caribbean. And uh, this is going to be worth discussing and the rest of this video might be a little bit long but I put a graphic in my blog that uh, gives my overall thoughts and kind of summarizes uh, the scenarios that I think are on the table and uh, you can go look at that. I show it at the end of this video as well in case you find um, a little bit all of this a little bit too much to absorb. And uh, this is the GFS 500 millibar forecast out to 60 hours and uh, our system would be somewhere east of the Yucatan at this time. You can see a large trough leaving the northeastern US leaving a weakness though over the north Gulf Coast and uh, this break in the ridge here is uh, where the models try to take the storm in between the Texas heat ridge to the west and the Atlantic ridge to the east uh, through this break and into the Gulf Coast. However, there are a couple of reasons to doubt uh, northward movement um, and favor more westward movement, in movement instead. And one of the reasons is if we look at the GFS here out to 60 hours again at the surface now you can see it's stringing out a front, stalling out and washing out 
over the southern US near the Gulf Coast. And when you get a washed out front like this, you get high pressure developing uh, behind it, as you see here. And it is kind of hard to bring a storm, unless you already have a hurricane in the northwestern Caribbean, it's kind of hard to bring something through weakness like this. This weakness is really not that strong. And if you have a, a storm that's farther to the south here, near Cozumel perhaps, it will probably easily cross the Yucatan instead and sneak into the western gulf south of this nosy Texas ridge which is in here and we could easily see the storm sneak in here as much as we could see it come to the north. And this is a scenario that I think is not being given enough weight by the GFS and uh, we could end up seeing a westerly track instead. Um, the problem later on though is that the GFS has a short wave developing over the Midwest and diving down towards the Gulf Coast and this generates an even bigger weakness with a big trough developing over the central Gulf Coast by day five. Now the GFS already has the storm through the weakness already and into Georgia by this time. This would be by Saturday I believe. But if the storm is slower and has snuck farther west in here then it may not be as guaranteed to come to the north. And one of the reasons the GFS brings it to the north is because it develops so far north in the Caribbean to begin with. This is the wave axis in yellow here um, by 60 hours east of the Yucatan. And with these broad wave axes, uh, low pressure can really develop anywhere along them. So we could get a low um, near the coast of Honduras or we could get one farther north. The GFS ha happens to feed back the northern lobe and this, this moves right up to the north and sometimes the GFS can have a problem with feeding back systems too far to the north and east and if this is occurring then the European model which develops it farther south in the Gulf of Honduras might be more correct and if we do get development farther to the south here I think it's less likely to go through this weakness and more likely to sneak across the Yucatan and end up somewhere in here and then meander around for a couple of days before deciding where to go. Now uh, here, there's the GFS showing it coming into the Gulf Coast. Now, one of the only storms I could find that is a decent analog to the pattern that we're currently in was Hurricane Florence in 1988. This storm developed north of the Yucatan, similar to a position where our wave might be by Thursday or Friday, and uh, then it came straight north into the Gulf Coast. And here is the upper level pattern uh, during Florence's formation. So Florence was down here at this time. You can see a shortwave trough over the Mississippi Valley with a big break between the ridge to her east and the ridge to her west. And uh, she came straight north through this break now. The interesting thing to notice about Florence is uh, that her ridge to her west was actually due west of her. So even if she wanted to come west here, there was no way she could have. This was a good example of a guaranteed Gulf Coast landfall. And the reason I bring this up is because our pattern is not guaranteed the way Florence's was. What we have is a situation where the ridge, instead of being down here due west of the Yucatan where our wave will be, by Thursday or Friday, we have the ridge up near the Mexican border up here. So you can see it nosing out off the Texas coastline, which is why if we have a storm in here, it could just as easily slip westward under the ridge back into Mexico for a second landfall as it could move northward through this weakness. So there's a reason to uh, perhaps anticipate some more westward movement than some of these models are showing. And we now have uh, the European, which has been very consistent at developing the, the low here and then bringing it across and just keeping it in the Bay of Campeche very far south here, might even be too far south, but you can see it being consistent there um, south of this washed out front just not something that's going to be able to bring a weak system this far north unless the system develops as far north as the GFS has it. The location of formation will be very key for the system's future track, but if it develops farther south like this, I think it heads west the way the European shows, and the UK Met shows this as well at day five with the low being in the Bay of Campeche instead of up in Georgia where the GFS has it by that time. And even on the GFS itself, this is the GFS Ensemble mean, and uh, the GFS operational run has it up in Georgia, but you can see the ensembles have a lot of low pressure hanging back in the western half of the Gulf. And so the GFS is even fighting with itself here with some of its ensemble members going farther west. And uh, I think this is perhaps even the more likely scenario. That's what I'm leaning towards right now, uh, given the setup that we have. And uh, that's why I have this graphic here, which is available in my blog. 
showing essentially what we were talking about uh, last week with this wave coming, developing into low pressure somewhere in the vicinity of the Yucatan Peninsula, and then deciding where to go. We will know more about which one of these scenarios is more likely after we see exactly where development occurs. If we get low pressure farther north, the yellow tracks may become more likely. But if development is farther south, and uh, which I currently anticipate, I think this track um, is currently more likely. I currently have it at a two and three chance, uh, with the track to the north being a one out of three chance. And we will know more about which one of these is uh, going to occur once we see the system actually get into this area. But right now, the main concern is going to be heavy rainfall for the Western Caribbean and Central America. And uh, looking beyond that is still filled with uncertainty. Uh, we'll see if it develops here or on the other side in the Gulf. And if so, how strong it will get. We'll know more about all that after we get a couple more days under our belt here watching this system and get more information about it. So right now the main concern is heavy rain for these folks as the wave comes through and then after that um, we could see Mex Mexico or the United States getting another shot of rain from this and if it comes north all it will be doing is adding to rain that is already going to be falling shown by the GFS here by this stalled out front over the south. It's going to be wet either way for the southern US so expect a nasty latter part to this week with or without a tropical storm coming in to add to the fun. Uh, so nasty weather all around and we'll see if it uh, where it goes after that time. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.